In this segment, we're going to talk about some basics of implementing neural networks in PyTorch. The basic idea behind frameworks like PyTorch and TensorFlow and others is that computing gradients is hard. And we want to instead be able to offload that work onto uh, a, basically onto something like a compiler. And so the core idea is that if we have a bunch of mathematical operations written in code, uh, we can theoretically use uh, a, a tool called automatic differentiation to understand basically what's going on in that code and keep track of the derivatives. So roughly you can think about this as follows. If I write y equals x times x, um, then a compiler should be able to uh, look at that multiplication operation and uh, you know, basically generate code which does the following. Um, we're going to keep track of this, this kind of dy term here, um, which is going to track uh, the derivatives here as well. And of course, y is going to capture x times x as before. Um, and so this is the idea behind so-called computation graphs. Rather than just doing operations on numbers in our code, uh, we want to think about defining and instantiating this object which represents that computation and which then we can do reasoning over, like for example, differentiation. Uh, and so the computation is now something that uh, we handle symbolically. And so, you know, we have to change the way we write code a little bit, right? And that we couldn't necessarily just, um, you know, use kind of constants or do all the kinds of operations we want before. Um, but assuming we're willing to kind of play within those, you know, very mild restrictions, uh, we can use libraries like PyTorch or TensorFlow to express our computation. And now we don't need to go about computing derivatives ourselves. We can instead get these frameworks to do it for us. So essentially, this is how we're going to think about PyTorch uh, in this course. It's that it is a framework for defining computations that uh, provides easy access to derivatives or gradients. And so we'll, we're going to see a very brief crash course uh, in PyTorch here just to understand uh, the, the kind of core pieces that, uh, that go into PyTorch code um, from the perspective of what we're going to be building. So uh, a torch module uh, is the kind of basic unit of a neural network. Um, this, this, these things can be uh, recursive or, or hierarchical, so you can wrap other modules which um, either implement predefined layers or other parts of your network if, if you wrote them, et cetera. And so there's two uh, kind of critical pieces of functionality here. We have forward, which takes an example uh, or an input and then computes some kind of result. So this can represent either, again, your entire network from feature vector to prediction, or uh, you know, just one layer from a vector of a certain size to another vector of a different size. And then we have backward. Um, so this, typically, you do not need to write by hand. And so the cool thing about PyTorch is that based on what you write in, the, in forward, Backward will be automatically instantiated and will do the correct thing uh, to compute gradients. Um, the, the caveat is that if you do some kind of really crazy math in, in forward, um, you, know, you might have to define backward yourself if there's some kind of extra you know, part of the gradient that you need to like, compute analytically um, and you know, code that in. Um, but otherwise, you know, if, if you're using relatively basic mathematical operations or standard neural net tools, then uh, you know, you'll never need to touch backward. All right, so remember that this was our, uh, our kind of basic neural net starting with features, uh, going to this vector of hidden unit z, and then going to uh, an output distribution over classes uh, with these two weight matrices, v and w, and one nonlinearity, so one hidden layer here. Let's see how this looks uh, in PyTorch. So in PyTorch, it's relatively straightforward to define. 
So we have first these different layers. We have uh, our weights V and W, uh, our nonlinearity G, which in he which in this case is uh, hyperbolic tangent, um, and we have our softmax at the end, which is going to map from uh, again the vector of real numbers into a vector of probabilities. And so these. Uh, these linear layers, uh, essentially, you know, you could think of these as just implementing the matrix multiply, and they have associated parameters with them. Um, so we're calling them V and W, but basically inside each of these linear layers is the matrix, which is actually uh, implementing that operation. And the forward then has this fairly simple form uh, where uh, you know, we don't actually have to call forward on each of these layers. Um, we can just use apply. So self dot v of x, you know, multiply by v, apply g, multiply by w, apply softmax. Um, and this, again, you know, you can look up at the math above, and it is a very direct translation from the way that we've defined this mathematically into this uh, forward function. So the Input to the network is something that we have to uh, we have to kind of massage typically. So we've talked about how you know we always need to go from raw text into a feature representation, and so as part of that process, when you're using PyTorch, you additionally need to uh, convert things into some kind of tensor, uh, and whether this is uh, turning things into integer word indices, which can then get uh, embedded using various word embedding layers. That's kind of where we're going next in the course. Uh, or whether you're using real valued vectors, uh, basically you need to convert things into a format that, uh, that Torch can understand. And so the, you know, the usual, uh, I, I, you could translate these things to and from NumPy arrays fairly easily. So uh, if code you have is already structured in terms of NumPy, getting it to work with PyTorch is not uh, too difficult. The main caveat is that if you do kind of weird stuff like you're always mapping in and out of Torch representations, um, you can break back propagation if you do this inside the network. Um, for example, if you go all the way to just like, you know, some bare number um, and then convert it back, uh, PyTorch will not necessarily be able to track derivatives through all of those operations, and so you have to be a little bit careful. Typically, you want to you know, form your inputs uh, to PyTorch and then kind of do, ev you know, do everything up to the output uh, all within the, the Torch framework, which is fairly flexible um, and so should not uh, cause too many issues. All right, so then in terms of training this network. So, we can instantiate it. Uh, again, this kind of calls back to what was on a few slides ago, showing the, the, the definition of this feedforward network. So we instantiate it with uh, sizes for the input layer, the hidden layer, and the output layer. And then we instantiate an optimizer. So we're going to talk about optimization a little bit more later. Here we're going to be using an optimizer called Atom which is going to operate over the parameters of this network and use a particular learning rate. All right, so now our loops look like the basic machine learning framework that we've set up so far. So we have a certain number of epochs that we loop over. Uh, and then here we're just going to loop over uh, inputs and labels in the training data. Uh, we'll talk about batching a little bit later as well, doing multiple inputs at the same time. This gold label here, we are going to assume is one of these vectors EI, which is a one-hot vector. So uh, it has a one in the position corresponding to the true label, which in this case would be the second class, um, and zeros elsewhere. So the first thing you do is you have to clear out gradient variables uh, using this zero grad call. And the reason is because PyTorch caches information about the gradients inside the actual network, and if you do not do this, you'll kind of keep accumulating gradient information and everything will be messed up, and this will be a bug that's very hard to find. We do that, 
Then we call forward on the input and we get some probabilities as output. So again, we've defined the forward uh, network to go all the way to softmax and give you uh, real valued probabilities. Now we need to compute a loss. So this is showing the explicit loss computation. There's plenty of built-in losses in PyTorch. Um, NLL loss, uh, which kind of implements what's here. Um, you have to make sure that you pass in the right thing, whether it's log probabilities or logits. There's a few different ones. Uh, just make sure you check the documentation for whatever you use. But here, what we want to do is we take the negative log of these probabilities and then we dot it with the gold label. And again, we think of that as a selector operation. And so that's going to give us the negative log probability of the correct label, which is our uh, negative log likelihood loss. And then we call dot backward on this loss. And so what this does is this computes the gradient of the loss with respect to all of the uh, parameters of the network. And then we take a step with the optimizer. So now the step, it knows it's kind of responsible for optimizing all of the parameters of this network. And when we call optimizer.step, it will use the atom optimizer based on the gradients that were just computed as part of this loss.backward operation um, and apply our gradient update. So the basic you know kind of flow of training looks like what we saw on the previous slide now the thing that we have to be careful of is that we initialize everything correctly so this is another point that we're going to come back to but it's very important that we initialize the network parameters to non-zero values and this is because it's unlike uh, in the linear classification case, we now have a non-convex optimization problem. And so uh, gradient descent can find different optima based on what the initialization of the network is. And so uh, if you initialize with uh, zero weights, you kind of get stuck and, and never learn anything. Um, and finding good initializers is very important. All right, so the kind of final just picture of training I'm going to give, which we're showing here, is we define our modules, we initialize our weights for them and our optimizer, and then we loop through epochs and data batches, we zero out the gradient, we compute the loss, and we use backward, our automatic differentiation, to compute gradients, and we take a step on the optimizer. And then after each epoch, one thing we might consider doing is check performance on our development set. So we want to make sure that we're not overfitting, that we're still making good progress, that you know everything is kind of set up correctly. So this is a good thing to get in the habit of doing is to you know just periodically have a small set of validation data and check uh, performance on that just to make sure um, you know to make sure that things are working as intended. And then finally, once you've gone through uh, this whole process, uh, you want to compute your final results uh, either on your development or test set as appropriate. So that kind of gives you an overview of how we take the uh, network that we had, convert it into PyTorch code, and, and kind of map all of these elements of the training phase into code. Uh, and that's it for this segment.